Hey there, welcome to the tutorial on how to make a 2D physics engine. Uh, in this tutorial, there will be multiple parts and we'll discuss many aspects of the physics engine, um, including collisions, penetration, collision response, uh, as well as movement, uh, such as position, acceleration, and velocity. And we'll tie everything together to make something that's similar to, to this that you see on screen right here, where uh, this blue ball, I'm controlling it with my WASD keys, and essentially I can bounce it around, and it will it will react based off the different properties of the bounds that I assign to this, as well as the walls. As you can see, the wall here it just kind of sticks to it instead of bouncing. Um, and just reloading here, uh, you can see that if this big ball, which I believe has a bigger mass than uh, this red ball, uh, if, if you hit it, then it's going to collide and it'll result in a response with the red ball. Uh, as, you, as you can see here, these red balls don't have any gravity attached to them, but if I, let's say, let go, see that blue ball uh, it has gravity onto it. And so I'll be doing this for the entire tutorial. I hope you enjoy and I hope you learn something from this. And let's get started. Okay, so here's the project. I basically have a normal uh, JavaScript project with uh, Webpack enabled so that every time I reload, as you can see over here, every time I reload, it's gonna save it and it's gonna reload the, the entire application on the browser. So if I, let's say reload here, if I save here, it's gonna save it there and automatically reload the browser so that I don't have to reload the browser manually. Now starting with the HTML file, I'm not going to go too complicated with this. I'm just going to put some basic code so that it's up and running as fast as possible. So if you do the, if you just do one exclamation point or exclamation mark, and then you press enter on VS Code, it has the basic uh, HTML layout. And so over here, let's just put 2D physics engine as the title. Uh, let's also add a style tag, which will target the canvas, and we'll add that in just a sec. Um, the canvas will have a border of one pixel, solid, and black. Display is block. The margin is zero auto, so that it's centered. Uh, actually, maybe let's try this. It'll be even more centered. And then I will add the width, which is going to be 100% of the page minus two times 50 pixels. This will essentially be kind of like a padding so that it's not the entire uh, width. And same with the height over here. Now let's add the canvas. So I'll have an ID as canvas. There you go. And just have a tab index of zero, just in case uh, we need to tab into it whenever we need to use it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a main function. And this main function will be instantly called. And then I will define the canvas. So const canvas equals document dot get element by ID canvas. Also get the context of the canvas equals canvas dot get context 2D because we're doing a 2D physics demonstration. Now what we'll also do is we will set the dimensions. So what we'll do is canvas dot width equals window dot inner width and I'm gonna do something different here I'm going to multiply it by two uh, first I'll just do this so this is similar to the uh, the code that we put onto the CSS however I'm gonna multiply it by window dot device pixel ratio 
And this depends on your device. My device has a two device pixel ratio. So for every, every pixel on my screen or every four pixels on my screen, there's gonna be one pixel onto and what this does is just it makes the image sharper based on your screen type. Well, we're also going to be doing this the height. There you go. Um, so yeah, you can see that it's not exactly centered vertically. So I'm going to be adding styles to the body as well. Height 100 viewport height width. 100 viewport width, margin zero. Um, looks like the margin is not working. So what I'll do is I'll just put to grid justify items center, align items center, and that should work. There you go. This is essentially the playground that we will be doing all our physics experiments in. Okay, so now with the canvas, uh, let's begin drawing some some objects. Let's draw a circle, for example, or a ball. So to draw a ball, uh, essentially you'd be beginning a path, like so, and then you would do you do context arc, and this is the x position. So let's just put canvas .client width divided by two so it's at the center hors uh, vertically or horizontally and then for the height we'll do canvas dot client height by two so it's vertically centered as well then this is the radius radius let's just put a hundred um let's also put the starting angle as zero and the end angle as math dot pi times two so two pi and counterclockwise, we'll just put false. I don't think that matters, but let's just put that as false. Then we'll fill it with a color by doing by using the fill style method. Let's just put that as red. Uh, then we will fill it. And I believe you could also do you could close the path so that it doesn't interfere with anything else, just in case. So if we look here. For some reason, I have to reload that. But if you look here, uh, we get the we get the ball. Now it's not exactly centered. That's because of the device pixel ratio. Um, what I'll do instead is I'll leave the device pixel ratio alone for now. And we'll fix that up later. So there you go. It's at the center with a radius of 100. Let's just decrease that to 30. Let's say, and there you go. We have a nice ball. And so what I'm going to be doing in this tutorial is I'm going to be creating classes for most of the items and the objects that we're going to be using. And so ideally with the canvas, I'm going to, I'm going to create a new canvas object or canvas class. And let's just put this in a folder called classes canvas or JS. And I'll tell you why I want to do this in a sec. We'll also do uh, we'll make the new canvas and we'll export it as the default. So the reason why I want to do this is because we're not going to be able to access the canvas and other objects in the future if it's only defined in the index. So I want it to be kind of like a global thing that we can use. And so when we define constructor what we will do is we will initiate it and we'll put this as this dot element the context as this dot context and so these two would have to be these dot elements we could remove this for now and just place it here and so if we want to use the context, all we have to do is just import it. There you go. So now it should, oh, no, it's not. 
Uh, cannot access canvas before initialization. Oh, over here. This not all that. So we called canvas before we actually defined it, and this should have been an element. So there you go. Now it should be working. Um, I believe this should be good as well.